So now we had our proof that the technology works. We had our areas of concentration lined up of how we're going to make GE not so unique anymore in their application or at least address those issues. Um, and we still had some skeptics within our senior leadership team. So we, we went one more step and we took those findings from the proof of concept. We took the areas of concentration and we wanted to go deeper. Let's do something a little bit bigger. Um, one of the big differences between the proof of concept and the pilot, proof of concept was done on TMAX soft hardware. The pilot was done for the first time on GE hardware within our network, with our uh, infrastructure. Um, so we wanted to gain that further insight. And then the second real thing we wanted to do here is that user base that is so worried about changing the UI, we wanted to prove to them that it's not going to change. Don't worry. Okay. So this took six months. Um, the code that we built here was reused, whereas the proof of concept was throwaway. Um, we did about approximately 5% of the code base. We made sure we touched on all the technical nuances within our code. Pop-ups on a mainframe. We had them. Right? How does that work in rehosting? Critical path functionality. Right? We process a lot of cash, as you can imagine. And when we can't process cash, one, we don't make any money, and our customers don't get the funding and the credit that they need to do what they're doing. So we wanted to test that process. And then finally, like I said, install OpenFrame on GE hardware and see how it works. Okay. Now obviously, the pilot was successful or I wouldn't be standing here today. Um, and we got the go ahead to move on. Um, before I move, I wanted to show you, this is, these are actual quotes that came from some of the users that we, uh, that we had test this in the pilot phase. And basically the comments were around, it looks the same, it feels the same. Um, no noticeable difference, which is exactly what we were going for. Um, so we started to get some buy-in from the user base that, all right, these guys really aren't, you know, giving us a story. And one of my favorite stories uh, of the project actually comes from this, uh, this part, and that is uh, one of my systems analysts, and we'll call him Wayne because that's his name. <laughs> and he, he, was, he was attempting to help one of our users with a data problem. And he's searching and searching and searching, and he can't find the data. And he's driving himself crazy. And he goes back to the user, hey, can you share your screen again? Show me. There's the data. Perfect. Great. Let me go back. He still can't find the data. Well, you probably guessed. He, he thought he was on the mainframe. He was in Unix. So my point in sharing that, and I shared the story a million times, even within our own, in our own organization, not only did the users not see a difference, but the guys that built and maintained this thing, they can't see a difference to the point where he wasted three hours of his day looking for something that didn't exist. Okay. I, I love that story. I think it's a, a classic example of, of what we were going for. Okay, so um, I'm going to take a little step back here before we dive back into the project. I, this is not something I'm going to go deep on. Uh, but I wanted to make, it, make you aware of it if you are planning or thinking about doing any of these implementations. PMS Calc Cheater Rehosting in the middle, that's our PMS suite of applications. That's the project we're doing. But as we started to build out this project plan and start to think about those 382 interfaces and things like that, we actually ended up with seven sub-projects that all had to be completed in the right timeline in order for us to start testing the actual converted and rehosted application. And these aren't small things. Uh, the, the bubble in the upper right called FLAP, once again, I had nothing to do with naming it, was our pricing, or is our pricing engine. Every deal that goes through PMS gets flapped. Right? It determines the lease streams, it determines the rental streams, the property tax. There is no deal if we can't price it. It's written in Fortran. How many people on my staff know Fortran? Zero. How many want to learn Fortran? <laughs> Less. The, we, we had to do something with these products because you can't run, as far as we know, Fortran on Unix. And even if you could, I don't want to go there. I can't find the skill set. So we actually did a whole separate conversion of the flat module from Fortran to C. The reason I'm telling you this, that had its own budget, its own project manager, its own development resources, its own vendors, its own project plan, its own rigor, its own toll gating process within GE's PMO. Rehosting is not just rehosting. There are other sub-projects, and I just want to make sure that people really understand the full scope before you get into that, because it's, it's a big cost changer once you start to realize 
oh, that doesn't work over there. Okay. So focus. We have um, we have uh, a bunch of departments, specifically our U.S. tax department, that uses focus extensively. Um, and we're getting off the mainframe. We're not going to convert all the focus stuff. So what we ended up having to do, and this is kind of backwards, but um, this is what the tax group wanted. We had to take our, our code, that our batch jobs, that create those focus extract files and move them from one part of the mainframe to another. We actually rehosted and converted those jobs, ran those, and FTP'd the focus, converted them back to EBCDIC and then put them back on the mainframe so that the focus guys can pull that stuff back in. Now, since we did that and they saw the bill they're going to get for still using the mainframe, they'll be converting pretty soon. <laughs> okay. they, they, it, we, they didn't have the time, they didn't have the priority, they didn't have the funding to do it at that point. It was probably not the best way to do it, but it facilitated the rest of the project. Yeah, so I'm talking about IT employees. Um, basically, it's, it's what we talked about, or what I talked about earlier about some of the tool sets and, and my team having to um, learn different tool sets to do what they wanted to do. Um, there's also, you know, when you do this conversion, right, your code is changing. So there are tool sets like the data access layer that a terrorist provides that your team has to understand what it is, how it works, because when you make a change, you're going to need to change it. So there was that kind of stuff, and Ateris and TMAX both provided that training. Um, it, we, we had people on site for a week. It wasn't a big deal, but that's really what that was, the planning of that and developing that training material with what Ateris already had, but then, but I don't want to know what other companies did. I want training to my application. So that's why it became a project. Um, we basically had to write a training program. Sure. Correct. Correct, correct. But now they're looking at a flat file database, and now you got these things called tables, not records, right? Now you got ER diagrams, not a Bachman diagram, right? That kind of stuff. You, you have to retrain the the IT folks. Not a not a big deal, but it was something that that we had to do. Right No, we moved to an IDE, and it's, it's basically TMAX Soft's um, Open Studio products. Um, we did not migrate the TSO ISPF. Because you can. Yes, you can. There is a way that the developer wouldn't even know that he doesn't have TSO ISPF, but he do run that again. Right. Yeah, we use we TMAX Soft's. You're not talking about costs overall. Where, when the executive actually bought into this project, was it before the proof of concept? Or it was really after, after the pilot. So we did, we did the proof of concept, and they said, okay, we'll pay attention to this. Then we, went, then we did the assessment, which really told us how big was big and what this thing was estimated to cost. And we did this kind of work to figure out what all these sub-projects were going to cost. And then we did the pilot because, obviously, the number I gave them was not small. And they said, all right, I want to be really sure this is going to work. That's why we ended up doing a pilot secondary to that. No, but before before we actually got the official approval to move into the build phase, we knew what, what was in front of us. We had done that analysis, um, you know, between the assessment and the end of the pilot. We were, you know, as we were looking at stuff, going, "Oh my God, what are we going to do with flap?" Right? I mean, we figured that stuff out. Right? We we talked to a terrorist about, "Okay, you're going to put this data access layer in." Uh, you're going to teach me how, what that is, right? So all that kind of stuff fell in place. So when we went for funding approval, we kind of had a good idea of, one, we could get the, the ROI and, and, two, what the ultimate cost would be. At the end, what was the ROI? Can you share that with us? We, our ROI is probably about 1.8 years as payback. Um, we did. We did. Um, it was... We did it. I mean, we're saving significant money. I don't want to ruin the punchline at the end of the, the end of the bench, but <laughs> okay. Anybody have anything else before I move on? 
Okay. So the build process. Pretty straightforward. A terrorist came in, converted our language, all the, all the code, converted the databases, uh, delivered those DDLs, created those extract and load programs. In the meantime, TMAXSoft translated all of our JCL. They translated the entire file system, the vSAM, the GDGs, the sequential files, and then converted everything from FCDIC to ASCII. Uh, and then, as well, they were responsible at that point to setting up the environment, configuring OpenFrame to work, showing us how to use OpenStudio to submit batch jobs and things like that. Um, so that was kind of the build process. I didn't spend a big time. You'll notice it wasn't very long, right? Once you do that pre-work, and that's why I stress that assessment so much, the build is easy, right? Um, I mean, the automation that the terrorist has for that code is pretty cool. You'll see later I talk about um, the fact that we decided to do a code freeze. A terrorist didn't know why, because literally they could rerun this, the entire code in about three days and reconvert the entire application again. Really cool stuff.